they must have gone through having such similar, not only the loss of her son, but the rem being reminded of all of the situation with your dad as well. Yeah, definitely. It was it was extremely hard on on her. Um, but he's an extremely resilient and strong person, so you know she continues to live her life and 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 live a joyous life. And um, you know it's uh, it's something that you uh, work into your psyche and and hold for your, your hold close to yourself in a way that you learn to hold it in a way that you can deal with it over a matter of time. Shannon, in a world of men and martial arts and cinema, where did you fit into this? And how did you fit into this world? You know, I think as a, as a kid growing up, I didn't. <laughs> And, but, but actually, I think that was by design. You know, my mom was always really great about allowing us to be our own people and pursue the things that we were passionate about. And I, and I when I was about um, eight years old, I took some Jeet Kune Do classes. Jeet Kune Do is my father's martial art. And I did that for um, a few weeks, and I said, oh, I don't really want to do this anymore and so I did not study martial arts as a child growing up. I didn't really come to that until I was in my 20s actually, my early 20s. Um, and I think it was in part because um, you know I wanted to just be a kid doing what all the other kids were doing and all the other kids um, at the time were playing soccer and volleyball and softball and doing all that kind of stuff, and so I was extremely athletic always, but my mom didn't push us one way or the other. And certainly we grew up in an extremely normal way. We never were involved in anything that was going on in Hollywood or, um, you know, occasionally we would, we would go and meet up with friends who had been friends of my father's who were martial artists, and we would attend, you know, celebrations of my father's first, you know, my father's birthday or the, to recognize the date of his passing or that sort of thing. But really, for the most part, um, I was not involved in the martial arts or, the, or movies or any of that kind of stuff until I was able to sort of choose it for myself as an adult. And um, uh, what do you think was the impetus for you choosing that path? I think that it was a, a multifaceted. I think on the one hand, I was really became curious at a certain point, given what my legacy is and who my father is about the martial arts and about what, because, you know, my father considered himself a martial artist first and foremost. And so he really um, loved the martial arts and felt that it had taught him everything about life um, through his study and practice and evolution of those arts. And so I think there was a curiosity on my part to understand that in some way, to be connected to it in some way. And then, you know, in terms of getting into acting, which I did do for a while and, and maybe doing again, I, um, I have always just really wanted to um, express something in a creative way. And I think that um, everything that I do is a function of expressing myself creatively. And, and I was always really into uh, performance and that kind of thing as a teenager. And so I, it was sort of a natural to me to want to get out there and try some acting. And being Bruce Lee's daughter, you know, the, the things that people immediately think of you for are action films. So that's what I did. Well, I'll tell you, I grew up on, on your father's uh, films. My father was an avid, avid Bruce Lee. I mean, if we wanted to get him to watch any TV at all, it had to be either karate or wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he called it, karate or wrestling. He dif didn't differentiate between any of the, the different forms of artistry that, that were involved in martial arts. Uh, all he knew was that it was either Bruce Lee, karate, or it was wrestling. And um, and I know that I speak for a lot of people that uh, 
that actually um, consider Bruce Lee to be a hero. And watching you develop, uh, knowing that you've been in a lot of films, um, you know, you, you've done uh, uh, things like Cage 2, High Voltage, Enter the Eagles, and um, I was mistaken here, I was looking at my notes, and I thought when it was a movie, I thought that when I saw Dragon, you see Dragon, that's the first thing that you think about. But uh, it was the biotech, biopic uh, that I was, that, uh, from my understanding, is that you appeared in. And yes. uh, you also have been in Blade, uh, the science fiction television film Epic, which uh, I happen to love. <laughs> on the sci-fi uh, channel. What do you think your father would think of you being in the arts? Would he be proud or would he worry about you? Uh, I definitely think that he was a man who believed in um, finding your own path and self-actualization, self-expression. And I think that if he truly felt that that was something that I wanted to do, needed to do, needed to try to do, to express or find something out about myself, that he would be happy to, um, to support that. Certainly my mother was always happy to support us, my brother and myself, in whatever it is that we wanted to do. Now, that doesn't mean that a mom doesn't worry. <laughs> but, uh, but at the same time, that's part of letting your child be who they are. So, um, you know, I think that he would have been supportive and probably would have been quite a resource in terms of uh, navigating the the acting world and the film world and all that kind of thing. Do you have any current projects going on, Shannon? Um, you know, actually, I'm in discussion to do a film for Sci-Fi Channel. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see about that. I um, I just hosted some something on Spike TV. They had a Bruce Lee Day, and they showed Enter the Dragon, and I hosted the screening of that talked a little bit about the film at the commercial breaks and that sort of thing. I kind of haven't been acting for the past few years because I had a daughter four years ago, and um, so I had been devoting my time to her and taking some time off, um, and so I hadn't been acting, but actually I've been thinking about getting back into it now, so you've caught Beautiful. me at a good time. <laughs> and your daughter, Ren, is, uh, what a beautiful name. Just, a, just an unbelievable, and I don't know, some, somehow uh, it reminds me of that, uh, the Brandon episode, uh, that flight, that bird in flight. Mm. What were the reasons you chose that name? Um, you know, it was rather interesting, as all prospective parents do. I had a baby name book, and I was looking mm. through it. And I actually came across the name Ren, spelled R-E-N. And I just loved uh, the sound of it. I just loved the way that it sounded and the way that it flowed uh, and came mm -hmm. out of my mouth. And um, but, but I wasn't sure about... Um, it seemed somehow like it needed some, something else. I loved the way it sounded, and then I thought, well, what about W-R-E-N? And I actually really... Um, went back and forth for a while but came to really love the name because I feel like it's a really strong yet beautiful name. And uh, I looked up the characteristics of wrens and they're quite feisty little birds and so believe you me when I say that she's aptly named. 